Yo, what's up gang? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna have a good talk and an interview with my one of my good friends and motivations from the calisthenics world. You probably know him as the superhuman or better yet, Frank Medrano. Thanks so much yeah. for doing this. Awesome, man. How's everything? Good, good, good. Great yeah. to be here and uh, meet up with you again and have a good talk. Yeah, it was five years that we yeah. didn't see each other. A long time, but you know, it's uh, definitely worth the wait. Yeah, five years, I think, since FIBO 2014. Yeah. When we met. Yeah, man, that was crazy. That was a crazy period, I think, for you. Like, probably more than me. Because that was my, like, starting to come up and, like, traveling in competitions. But for you, that was, like, I don't want to see your peak, because now you're getting bigger and bigger. But back then, you were, like, getting the crazy views. Yeah. And like, it was mental how everything went right yeah. so how was that period like exactly i mean honestly it was just totally unexpected you know because i did it just for uh as far as like me the love of learning calisthenics and and getting good at it and then showcasing my talent through mm -hmm. youtube so you know the success of it as far as like me getting so much attention you know the videos going so viral uh it kind of threw me off guard oh, yeah. like in the beginning when i saw the numbers and i saw people were um uh, coming at me, I was like, is this real? You know, it's like, really? I mean, is it really happening? Even now, when you're looking back at it, does it feel like uh, another I, life, I, maybe? I, I get, I, I get a constant reminders every day. Like, and you know, I see a lot of bad things happening in the world and I see, you know, all the people suffering and stuff. And then, and then I just, you know, sometimes I just, uh, you know, uh, just have time to think and then look at my life now. And it just makes me appreciate, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, I'm very grateful for, for all the success that I've gone through it. So it keeps me humble. It keeps me humble to, to, um, um, keep staying busy and, and keep working and keep helping people and keep putting good content out there, uh, reaching out to people, you know, changing their lives. So, um, that's my motivation, you know? So if anything, you know, everything was a blessing for me to, to have gone through all the bad stuff, you know, all yeah. the exposure you know, all the fame, um, but to be able actually to, okay, when I got the fame, but to actually put it to use, as far as like, okay, helping people and, you know, giving the workouts, showing them my methods, yeah. um, uh, giving guidance to people, that is kind of like a driving force for me and, and as a reward for me to not only just to make a, a living out of it, but um, to also, you know, spread myself, you know, around the globe through it, you know, the love of what I do that's what I love about you like even when you're at your peak and getting like 35 40 million views on like every video that you published being a big big name in the calisthenics industry and like even today that no one was like at that height you were like still so humble and grateful mm -hmm. like even not just to everyone else even to me because mm -hmm. uh, me coming up and everything you were like you had no problem talking to me, giving me advice, sending me shirts. I remember, yeah. I still have those shirts and everything. Yeah. You were always like giving and always appreciative of everything you have. Yeah. But a lot of people, like if you put them in your shoes and with that fame and everything, yeah. they w probably wouldn't be like that. Yeah. They'll be cocky, maybe being like an asshole or just yeah. not being grateful what they have. Mm -hmm. But for you, you knew what you have. Yeah. and you always wanted to give it back yeah. so yeah, that exactly. that's really great and that's the thing that i really love about you even now after five years of meeting we had still always had that contact and now doing this interview and filming like mm. that's amazing you know yeah yeah man i really appreciate that i mean that's what it's all about and you know it more than everyone you know it's just uh when you get to a platform where you are, are able to reach out to people and yeah. and um really be a, a person to look up to and a role model and and to see how you're changing people's lives you yeah. know not just in uh, their workouts and the bodies but actually also on the way they feel about themselves you know to increase their their confidence and, you see that and life in general person. and that that is is really big and you know not, not a lot of people like you said not a lot of people get that you know at the end of the day what it's all about is is yeah I, I um i have a platform now but what can i give to people to help and to to build it yeah. to build a community uh to build people up 
build their, their self-esteem, build the confidence, um, and you know, help them with whatever, whatever goes it is, whether it's learning calisthenics, you know, help with their diet, um, and yeah, motivation, it, and it never gets old. It, you know, people could keep asking me or keep asking us the same questions, and we don't get tired of answering. So that's what you know makes a difference, and um, it's never really too much about the money, the lifestyle. It's more about giving back. I mean, I I could have been really greedy in the beginning, and yeah. and just uh, um, gone all, gone for everything, yeah. and let it be all about me. But I, I didn't want to go that route. I want to make sure, you know, everything that I put out, everything is genuine. Everything is me, yeah. and um, I didn't you know uh, give into that temptation of just. Uh, being all about myself or or money pretty much it's all about giving back being a positive influence like you said and it's brought me you know to uh where i am today and i'm really grateful and you know to have friends like you that really um have the same values and are doing the same thing is 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 really good you know and it's it's really good to have people like you and and more people like you that feel the same way you know, because a lot of people like, you know, a lot of people see it as a competition. There can be calisthenic athletes because, you know, they, there's, they start being, you know, jealousies and people start throwing shades. But yeah. I mean, it's a big world. So, you know, it's all about, you know, being positive and, and um, you know, just building each other up. So. so in that period when you were in your prime and everything, did you have like those people who are like talking bad to you or the co bad comments and everything how did you like react because of course well, even when you get 100 likes you're gonna have that one guy who's gonna say something bad if it's at your personality or they just don't like what you're doing yeah so how's that like on a bigger scale and how did you handle it uh, yeah i mean it's uh, no nobody's perfect you know everyone has their flaws you know i'm not perfect i'm good at some stuff i'm not good at other stuff mm -hmm. um but the thing is I'm, i never claim to be the best i'm never claimed to be perfect yeah. and, and know every single thing so um what i focused on is like um, i'm gonna focus on what i'm really good at it and i'm gonna help people do that you know and i'm gonna help build people do to reach their goals with whatever they want um yeah that's pretty much it so like a lot of people think like you're a overnight success because all of a sudden, like from one, just that one video changed your life and brought you in a, like a different space of yeah. being a famous athlete. But people don't know how long you're actually doing calisthenics or yeah. whatever. Like when did you start working out? Yeah, I mean, I came from, from just working out at the gym, lifting weights, you know, uh, back in like 2005, 2006. Yeah. And eventually what happened to me is I got bored of lifting weights you know i wanted something more so I, I i looked for stuff and that's where i found youtube you know that's why i i saw other people like hannibal you know mm -hmm. uh uh you know barbarians you know i i saw people old doing school. yeah the old school guys i saw them doing the, the stuff that they were doing it's like man I, I really wanted to do that so in 2009 um i started working on calisthenics you know i got bit by the calisthenic bug and i got this hunger to like learn and because I started seeing results right away, I, I you know, I, I, I kept, you know, being, um, I kept pushing, I kept pushing, I kept pushing. And, um, you know, I just, it, it just uh, took over, you know, it just, uh, it, it kind of turned into a avalanche of different avenues, you know, where it was body, bodybuilding for me in the beginning yeah. for just lifting weights. From there, I turned it into, okay, I just want to be really strong for my, you know, pound for pound body. And I want to learn a few moves, um, and then you know, doing that, so it just it built up my self confidence. It built up my physique. I was able to get a really ripped, strong foundational physique that really performs well. Yeah. Um, and and then from there, I just you know, I kept pushing it. I kept pushing it, and um, every time there was obstacles, I, I wouldn't. Every time I fell, every time I had injuries, you know, I just. You know, there's just a fire in me that yeah. just wanted to keep going. So what kind of routines did you do? Like when you started, you know, calisthenics, did you copy the guys that you're watching on YouTube or did you make your own or combine like different stuff? And what kind of diet did you do? Did you have that knowledge already 
like from your bodybuilding like background and athletics uh, or you know, I, ha I had the to start off with I had the basic knowledge back mm -hmm. then what it was was back then you had to eat six meals a day yeah back then you had to have a protein shake after you like work out it's like a must and, and uh, you know you had your bodybuilding splits so I was mm -hmm. just into that um, so going into calisthenics and a different way of looking at nutrition I really didn't have anyone to show me honestly I, I didn't have anyone coaching me um, I did, all I really had was YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at Devin from Barbarians and I looked at Hannibal and, and I really liked how they worked out. So, you know, I just saw their videos. I saw the exercise they were doing. So, and that along with, you know, the basics of uh, calisthenics, you know, your push-ups, your, yeah. your pull-ups and dips, um, squats, all the basic. I pretty much just made circuits out of those. Did you work out every day? And I would work out every day. So the, every day I would work out for, you know, at least three hours. Really? Every, every oh. single day some days even five hours so um, I didn't have a teacher so the way I, I did it was um, I worked with the basics I started with the very beginning push-up pull-up nothing else no typewriter and then from there I made my own progressions mm. you know it's like okay I got really good at push-ups I got really good at pull-ups so I, ch I push myself to uh, um, progress and, and learn a progression that will take me to the next step for a uh, a muscle up for a flag for a typewriter um, and eventually I started um, building my workout programs with those progressions mm, okay. so once I build my workout programs with those progressions from after that then that's when it just took me to a whole new level because right after that that's when everything fell into place you know my typewriters muscle ups uh, front lever uh, handstands practicing handstands every day just even if it's just five, five yeah. minutes um, you know, all of that just it just came into fruition, and I would say um, within three to six months, oh. once I started, I mean, I, saw I, I I saw really good pro progress oh. within three to six months. By oh. six months of me, I mean that's just me being consistent and training every day, three hours. Um, that's that's how fast I got. That's really quick. Get, get that you know strength, um, along with the proper diet. You know, I I make sure you know I. Um, I ate healthy. Um, at that time, I wasn't vegan yet. No. Um, I was just uh, trying to maintain a healthy diet, you know. So I stuck to, you know, the the regular um, foods that people bodybuilding mm -hmm. eat, you know, uh, chicken breast, yeah, meat, the rice, typical, potato, yeah, the typical bodybuilder diet. Um, not till like 2011 when I had I met my friend uh, Calistanos. Uh, when I found out he was vegan, I didn't even know what a vegan was back then. It wasn't really too popular then. I decided to give it a shot, um, and then from there, that's when it kind of took me to a different yeah. level. Because uh, my physique and strength, but my physique and yeah. strength. Because after that, when I was when I figured out what to eat as a vegan, oh, and I was eating the right stuff. Because in the beginning, when you're vegan and you don't know, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of like uh, a learning curve. Sometimes you need to find the right food. Sometimes you're missing food, so you got to make sure what those are. But right after that, um, and I figure it out that's when I saw like man I was like being able to be I was able to work out really long um, with a lot of muscle endurance my recovery times for workouts were like um, doubled um, like, like like quick you know I was able to have workouts like the next day um, um, that's when my my training and nutrition went to a different level and wow. I made those other videos that took me to the next level which was you know the videos with my girlfriend mm. and then um, uh, the superhuman um, so when you started working out how much did you weight actually so like you know what, calisthenics I first, yeah I weighed 180, 180 I was at 180 you're like me now. yeah I was at 180 and I thought I was ripped mm. <laughs> you know 180 because I thought I wouldn't reach the level that I am now mm. but at 180 I thought I was ripped but um, I had no idea what it was going to do to me yeah. you know so I went from 180 to like 160 eventually and I fluctuate down to 150 155 160 at the heaviest but I was able to get down to that level and then um, you know it just made me more more uh, pound for pound stronger um, uh, it just made me more functional and I enjoyed being at that at this weight for me um, would I want to weigh more I wouldn't mind if if I could get back to 180, mm. but maintain my you know body, uh, fat, and body fat and conditioning. Yeah. Uh, most important, my conditioning mm. more than anything. Um, I wouldn't mind. It's just uh, 
I would just definitely have to up my calories, you know, because as it is already, I eat a lot of calories because I burn so much. I burn so much. I'm really busy with work. I'm really busy with working out, and it's just it takes it takes a lot. But that's just not my goal right now. For me, it's just I'm happy where I'm at. You know, I'm I'm trying to be functional. I, I you know I like the way I look. Um, uh, you know, but there there's always room for improvement. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know like. Um your main job now for the past like few years is just calisthenics, right? I yeah. mean, your main, training. your training yeah. and everything. You also have your workout programs, right? For every level yeah. or how does it go? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's uh, what I do is, uh, you know, uh, I have my training course online where people could subscribe mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they, they get access to my step-by-step -step bodyweight programs along with the meal plan. Um, and my regular training programs where it's just beginner, you meet at events, and it's just a one-time thing. Um, yeah, but before that, I mean, I was just the guy working at Costco, right? So, um, up until 2000, uh, no, actually it was like 2015, 15 even me when I went viral and stuff, and I was still, still working like I was still, nine to five job yeah, working a nine-to-five job at Costco, picking up trash from the wow, floor, man. you know? Like the biggest name in calisthenics and still yeah, working and being humble. And yeah, just still picking trash, well, what, you know. Why did you choose that? Why didn't you just like quit everything like else and just focus on the... Like I, I was telling you back then, like in 2014, 15, yeah. like bro, just put all your time into sports yeah. and you're going to grow even more. What yeah. made you like, wait, were you like hesitant or yeah, will this last um, or... Yeah, because uh, to me, like, this whole lifestyle is, is not, I'm not used to it. You know, for me, you know, growing up, I, I started working early on as a kid, like, you know, uh, hard labor, you know, mm -hmm. working with my hands, um, you know, as far as, like, you know, working in warehouses, doing stuff with my hands that required a lot of physical activity. And for me, that concept was in me where, like, I, I feel like I have to do that. So for me, like, something going into an, an industry where I have nothing... I, I don't know nothing about, um, it, it was really tough for me. I mean, I, I, I started training, I started training people because I became mm -hmm. so good at it and I learned a lot and I started training people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but it was just taking too much of my time along mm -hmm. with the, my, my work. So I really liked it. I really liked teaching people. I really liked to see you know, people's you know, um, faces when they get so happy, when they yeah. learn to move when they reached their goal, when they got their six pack, like it really brought joy into me when, I, when I, I'm able to help and help them with that. So I think after a while, like being able to help like a few people, uh, it made me realize like, man, if I just dedicate myself and just um, training and uh, showing my skill and, and teaching people, mm. uh, I could just, just do this full time. full time and just help even so more So that people. made you realize like the people and everything that you can actually use your platform, use your knowledge and everything to give back, yeah. that when you realized, oh, okay, I can do this like Yeah, because time. yeah, because back then I didn't have no idea you could do this yeah. off social media. Like I, I, I was, you know, I was training people, you know, just one-on-one, uh, -on -one, maybe like a, a few classes here and there, but I couldn't see myself making a living off mm -hmm. of it. I feel like, yeah, I could do it and it's fun, but, you know, Costco pays pretty good money. and. Um, I felt like I, it just wasn't enough. But social media gave me the platform, like yeah. you said, gave me the platform to be able to reach out to more people yeah. and making, make a living out of it. And even that was even my main thing. My main thing was always to be a police officer. Really? You know? so I, was, I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, I was, pro I I was actually wow. processing with the sheriff's department no as um, I was going viral, um, you know, going through the physical uh, tests, the rent tests, or exams. I was pretty far in. Did they already know who you are when you went for the physical and the police? Uh, I, I was just going viral, you uh -huh. know, with Superhuman. So it was maybe some mm -hmm. people might have known, but, you know, it was the beginning stages of it. Wow. And uh, I was getting pretty far to the point where, like, I was actually going to be assigned a, an investigator, a background investigator. Oh. I got that far. And then that, that, was, that was when I had to make a choice, too. It was like, Am I going to give up my dream of being a police officer? Because I've been wanting to do this since I was a teenager, you know? Um, but if I was going to do that, I couldn't. I had to this, yeah. quit cold turkey, everything in, in fitness, because I wouldn't have time for it anymore. So I had to choose. 
and I just I just couldn't um, I just couldn't let it go and you know calisthenics and and fitness was just um, doing really well for me and I felt like um, I could help a lot of people there so I decided to just go full steam with you know um, calisthenics and training and you know I don't regret it at all because I felt like I have been able to help a lot of people and and it's a big world and you know I just want to keep helping more people just like you you know so I think it's very good that um, we're in this position because um, we're able to change lives in, in a way that builds people's confidence in life mm-hmm. and um, in not just fitness but you know it helps them with their jobs it helps them with the relationship every aspect. every aspect you know and I get those messages a lot I get people messaging me like you know if it wasn't for you I would have committed suicide same same or, email yeah like and, and when I read those like really long emails you know like oh if I I was uh, you know I get messages that people were like hardcore drug users wow. they they changed their life because of me they and it and it all it was it had nothing to do with fitness wow. but they saw the video and something in them turned like whoa yeah. there's more than life than just drugs you know the, the body's an amazing thing not only that but the com- the confidence that we have and we show in camera and, and our in our training and everything it they they feel it you know they feel the power you know the human body and 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 they kind of get that confidence you know and that's what i think a lot of athletes like today who are getting like bigger and getting like a bigger and bigger name don't realize that you have kids girls older adults like everyone watching and being like oh yeah Yeah. i like him i'm going through this he's probably also going through that there we are helping without even knowing that we are helping a lot of people don't even realize that and they take it for granted. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, even uh, even small kids, you know, I, yeah. I've run into kids that are like, back then, like small little kids, uh, 12, 13 year olds now, they message me like six, seven years later, mm-hmm. they're like 20 and they tell me like, oh, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't become a, a personal trainer, like I'm doing really wow. good now. Yeah. You know, it's it, you know, pretty much help them and guide them build a career with just, being inspired you know by watching our videos so it's just you know it's just building a community of you know positive thinking people you know to improve the quality of life you know that's what it's all about yeah i can totally agree yeah um so my main focus was helping people and and uh being able to stay focused with that i mean obviously there i i had a lot of distractions i had a lot of uh things that came up as far as like personal issues um i had injuries you know, um, I had uh, some shoulder injuries and I've had some um, uh, bicep. like bicep, uh, like minor tears and stuff oh, no. that kind of took me away. Um, I never really put it out there, but there was times where I was injured for like over a year where I couldn't even do a muscle up. And that was which period? Oh. Um, that was probably like 2016, oh, so that 15. Long ago. Um, it came to the point where I felt that um, I was pretty much finished with, with calisthenics. No way. It was that bad, the injuries? It was my shoulder. And um, I just couldn't do uh, some of the moves that I needed to do. I couldn't muscle up. I couldn't do certain types of pull-ups. I could only do one type of pull-up. My hands had to be a specific. You know, I couldn't do, I couldn't do certain push-ups. And I was just going back and forth to different doctors, chiropractors, and no one was able to help me. And it went, it went pretty deep and I was getting worried and I felt like maybe I had to do something different because no one was able to fix me. Eventually I got to a point where like they did acupuncture and then it turns out that's all I needed. Really? I, one session acupuncture it fixed everything. So what was it like what kind it, of it, it, there was something in there that was stuck at, at like liquid or air oh. something that you know I guess none of the chiropractors or therapists could fix you know I was you know but it, it had something to do with fluids or air pockets mm. or something acid. Um, acupuncture was able to fix that wow. for me for that time. So once that was fixed, you know, I got the green light. I got big, I was able to train again and, uh, and, do, and do videos and feel confident just, you know, to push, uh, keep pushing forward. Um, but, I mean, I, I encountered a lot of injuries and stuff. Um, and that's just a... The thing with uh, calisthenics, when you're uh, you're trying to learn a lot of different things, you're pushing your body to different uh, methods of uh, exhaustion, and 
and sometimes you get injured and, and that's yeah. fine it's just you gotta you gotta recover bounce back but i'll tell you that every time i got injured i became my body became smarter and was able to adapt so every time i got injured i, I learned from it yeah and i never repeated that injury again yeah so i you know i i took those injuries as a blessing that you know it made me pretty strong to um, be able to avoid any unnecessary injuries um, but um, I mean how are you feeling now and what is your main goal now and do you have any injuries that you're going through at the moment or uh, what are your plans for the next like a year yeah my main goal now uh, my main goal is just pretty much to train I, you know I just uh, keep pushing hard I have no injuries right now you know thank God and um, I just want to stay healthy. I just want to help more people. I just want to keep growing. I want to work with people like yourself, you know, for, you know, good friends that, you know, want to, you know, help people. Um, you want to keep pushing and, you know, putting out more good content for, you know, people who want good content. Um, that's my immediate goal right now. Eventually, just I want to keep growing as, as much as I can as far as like, you know, uh, body weight training community. You know, because I really believe in it, as you do. Yes. You know, it's body, uh, body weight training is really, um, um, in my opinion, it's just, it's uh, really helpful as far as like self-confidence, uh, having your body um, really aware and to get it to a point where it's, it, it gives you like extra confidence, oh, yeah. um, transforming you to be able to know that you could just do anything, jump over any wall, run here or there and have no problems with it, you know? So... If you're saying like now you have like a lot of confidence because of your workouts and how you look, like before you started working out, did you have less confidence or I felt that, yeah, I mean, I, I felt, yeah, I felt I had less confidence yeah. and I felt unsure of things. I felt that maybe I couldn't do, maybe I wasn't good enough. Mm. Uh, but with body weight training, I felt like um, not only gave me confidence as far as my physique and how yeah. I look and my strengths and, and what I'm able to learn, but also gave me confidence and just living life in general. Right. And, and, you know, um, with uh, anything that I do with my family, having confidence to uh, um, do things that are scary, but necessary in order for you to grow. You know, sometimes like t taking risks yeah. could be pretty scary, but oh, yeah. if you build that confidence and you believe in yourself that no matter what's gonna happen, you're gonna make sure you're gonna get that done. If you have that confidence, then that takes you to a whole different level because oh, yeah. now you're um, you're taking risks that other people won't take. But um, that confidence that you have is going to make you blow through those risks and, and get get you there a lot quicker. So basically, calisthenics has like a positive impact in not just in the working out part, but also like in every aspect of yeah. life, family, like um, relationships, relationships yeah. like everything, right? Yeah. Even even uh, if fitness isn't your thing, it, fitness is, is just a hobby. Oh. Fitness is just for you just to work. It helps you at your other job, yeah. your regular job. If you have a regular job, it'll give you confidence there, you know, to be more of a person that, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give up. Gonna you gonna already up. know. I'm going to move up in the company. Yeah. I'm going to become a boss. I'm going to be a supervisor. I'm going to use this job to propel me to the next step, to something else. It opens up your mind yeah. to elevate your life. So you, so you don't feel that you're stuck in this spot because a lot of people feel like they're stuck in a box and they're scared to get out of it because, it, you know, because of family, because of money, because of um, things that they don't know of. But if, if they have the confidence to know that you know, they could pretty much do anything, uh, or they could take the risk and be confident that no, no matter what, they're going to make sure it happens. You know, we'll see a lot, of, a lot more people that are um, evolving into different things and, and reaching their dreams and not just dreaming about them that's what sports do i think mm -hmm. like building up confidence for later in life it doesn't matter if you're doing calisthenics football mm -hmm. basketball whatever like physical activity yeah. it's gonna help you in your future life yeah okay we talked a lot about uh my journey and how i started and pretty much um a lot of things that pretty much happened so talk to me about your journey like um how did it all get started for you? For me, like, I started as a gymnast, like, in 1999. 
All because of my family, because really was really into sports. And even when I was like a baby, like my un my uncle used to like stretch me, yeah. to do like I don't know, just stretching my legs, my hamstrings, my shoulder already at a like baby age, yeah. and preparing me to have like a sport sporty lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And when I was like old enough, six years old, they showed me like they took me to the gymnastics hall, and I only started working out because. I saw like a friend there from kindergarten. Oh, there's my friend. Yeah, yeah I'm going to do it. It's going to be fun, you know, like because at a young age, like gymnastics and everything, it's not really training. It's more like playing around. Yeah. So through playing, you're actually like working out. So it was like fun and everything. But the trainer, my two trainers, they already noticed that, OK, this kid is already strong. Because I also played around at my house and everything, trying to do stuff like cartwheels and everything. So they already, after a month or two, saw like, whoa, okay, this kid is like stronger than the other kids. So they improved me into the other group, like a little bit older kids. Mm -hmm. And left my friend from kindergarten behind and everyone behind and I improved. Yeah. After a month, again improved like just rapidly improved yeah. to, through the ranks. And all of a sudden, like after a year, I'm competing, like already traveling, competing, winning, mm -hmm. you know? So it started like that and it just like a snowball effect. Like when I look at it back then, it was just workout every day. Like we had in the morning for two or three hours in the morning, then I went to school and then another hour at night, every day, like just for 12 years, it was like that. And I, I really didn't like it that much because I never liked like learning the routines. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, like freestyle now in, in street workout. Mm -hmm. it, it was like the same concept. And I really didn't like it. I was more enjoying the strength aspect and I was really improving. I was improving in both, but I was more leaning to uh, strength yeah. stuff, you know, like yeah. the workouts that we did like before the learning of the skills. And after like, I think eight years of just doing that and competing and winning and really traveling all over like the Balkan area and I was like uh, the representative for Serbia and I was also top five I think like sport men's in my city like as a young kid in 2006 like improving improving and then I remember like one day my trainer being like I think in 2008 okay okay kid we're gonna start preparing for the Olympics in 2012. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to try, do you want to do it, you know? And I was all hyped, okay, let's, you know, let's try it. As soon as I said that, injuries happened. Mm -hmm. Like one after the other, like um, broke my fingers a few times, uh, my arm, and then I had one major thing that I fell from the high bar. Mm -hmm. So I went to a competition in Hungary and on the warm up, I just fell on my head from the high bar from like three meters high. I did a double flip and fell directly on my head. So I missed the whole mat and everything and I fell on concrete on my head and just bleeding and everything. And since then I have like a fear of heights mm -hmm. because of the trauma and everything. Yeah. I had a concussion and a young kid yeah. and everything. So since then I was all of a sudden afraid to do like riskier stuff yeah. in the sport and as soon as you have that how you you can be a top athlete yeah. if you're afraid or yeah. and I just couldn't there's no I had that fear which I couldn't go over with there's no way like my trainer trying another trainer trying different trainers from different cities like yeah. when I was like competing they were trying and I just couldn't do it yeah you know and then I lost motivation for it totally. Went to in a like 
when I look back at it, it was like a depression. Mm -hmm. And I tried basically to injure myself so I wouldn't go really? to, my, to my workouts. I clearly remember me trying to break my fingers and hand on my workouts. Wow. It was that bad, you know, like just, I think, sad and like fed up. And I couldn't really leave the sport because of like family, like pushing me. And yeah. That's all I knew. Yeah. Like for 12 years, I was doing it. That, that was like me. Everyone knew me from that. You know, in school, everyone was like, oh, that's Dayan, you know, the gymnast is, you know, a good athlete. Yeah. I was known by that. And then like, pff, what? I had no, like, what now, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was trying to injure myself just to finish my career. Mm -hmm. That was probably the wrong yeah. methods for doing it. You know, I tried to quit once. I went to my trainer and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Uh -huh. And then he was like, okay, don't come for the workout this week. Take time off and then we're gonna talk. And if co of course, like for that week, I was like, oh, I need to work out. Yeah. Cause I've been doing it for a long time and yeah. addicted basically. And I was like, when I came back, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna continue. But injuries more and more happened. Like I tore, I think both, one or both of my shoulders like the rotator cuff because yeah. the gym where we worked out was really bad like it wasn't like top class gymnastics gym like we were working out and our equipment that my grandpa grandpa used to work out my wow. father like 50 years old equipment yeah. you know and i broke one of those equipments you know and tore my shoulder in, in the process of it like it was that bad you know, so no future, only if I like leave the country. Yeah. But that was not an, even an option coming like from a, like basically poor family or, you know, like yeah. everyone being poor in Serbia and no way to get out. So like just frustrated and like, yeah. what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? And it came to that point that it wasn't even up to me if I'm gonna continue the sport. It was up to my trainer, which he was like, one competition, he was like, Dan, this is gonna be your last competition. We're not gonna let you do this anymore because mm -hmm. you're gonna injure yourself or die, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I had to stop. So that's basically the beginning. You kind of ended up getting what you wanted. It ended up, but... But it was, it was definitely a tough experience to go through, for sure. Yeah, when I... While I was going through it and everything, it didn't seem, I, I don't know, it's, when I look now back at it, it like different life. Yeah. Totally different life. Like, wow, that really happened. And yeah. 12 years of my life went like that. And oh, I, the only thing I have from it, it's my medals that I keep on my wall yeah. and the trophies and that's it. Like totally different life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, after that, because for the 12 years, I didn't go out. I didn't have friends. Only friends I had, friends I had were the, the guys in the gym. Mm -hmm. And those were basically my competition. Oh. You know, because I was like the favorite in the, yeah. I think I was like the favorite in the gym and yeah. you know, the trainers like favorite yeah. and everything. So it was like, I think a little bit of jealousy and everything, yeah. you know, it, not, proper friends. Yeah. We only see each other for like two hours in the gym yeah. and that's it. We didn't hang out after and I couldn't hang out with my schoolmates because right after school, I'm going to the gym again. Yeah. So they're like, oh, let's go out and play. It's different. I can't, I can't, I can't play. Yeah. Weekends, oh, I'm going to be tired and I need to study or I have a competition in a yeah. different city. So. After I quit, I was like, okay, now I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. and everything. So I started like drinking, partying, girls, like just did everything basically except the drugs, but like just drinking too much every weekend, like to the point that I'm like laying on the grass, oh. like drunk, you know? Yeah. And that was like me being 18, 19, you know? And that went, um, was there a time where like something like clicked uh, in your head where like you realized something more that you wanted to do with bodyweight training? Like when did that happen? 
that happened so basically the bad period of my life like that like drinking and everything lasted for a year maybe a year and a half and then randomly i started watching tv a little bit and i clicked the channel on eurosport and i saw the street workout world championship in riga yeah. the 2012 uh -huh. 2011 and 12 i think they were like showing and i was like watching like what mm -hmm. it's like a street workout what is yeah. calisthenic like i never even heard yeah. of the word but i've been doing it for yeah. 12 years yeah. but i didn't know the phrase of it yeah and then like oh like freestyle on the bar you know on tv and people from all around the world being there I'm like wow like that's that's nuts you know and while i was like watching it everything in back of my head and everything i'm like i can do that it didn't look like difficult to me yeah. or whatever. I was like, I can do that. Yeah. And then went to school, I think school or something. And then one of my friends, ra I don't know, just randomly were like, do you want to work out? They just opened like a park. Like what kind of park? Like a street workout. I'm like, I just watched a world championship. It was like, really? And just started talking and like, let's start working out. Yeah. So then I w went on YouTube and typed like street workout. And the first thing that it popped was like Hannibal, you and bar stars mm -hmm. and started watching them. I'm like, man, that I could see the views and everything like, damn, like I can do that and yeah. just copy, you yeah. know, and we just started working out and everything. And the goal was like to make a, already back then to make a living from doing that you already had that like mindset yeah basically that's great yeah and then for a year just doing that just me and my friend no one in a park mm -hmm. L like it's a huge park and everything in the forest no one there just me and my friend yeah and then we just started like posting and everything we made like a group on facebook you know and just posting us like working out and everyone hated it every everyone like the whole i yeah for the first year like people are looking at us like these guys are working out in, in the forest on in the park yeah. without their shirts off yeah like what the hell you know just a little bit hate yeah and then after a year i don't know what happened i think because of you and bar stars and everything more and more people started going to the parks you know and they saw like me and my friend they they wanted to join. Yeah. So it turns out like summer 2013, I had 10, 20 guys working out with me and 10 girls, I think, sometimes like more for free. I was like yeah. doing my workout, like helping my guys and everything. And then helping the girls like doing like basically PT, yeah. but for free, like for the community. Then like the, the word spread around, you know, the city and the city government or how you call it like yeah. I don't know, they recruited us as like to promote a healthy lifestyle and everything so everything went really big yeah. really fast and i was the only one in the group who only pushed like more and more like social media so i was the only one who was like gaining yeah. you know a, a following yeah. which it wasn't too big. It was only on Facebook, but still back then in 2013 it was like, you know, a few thousand, you know, uh, followers or here and there. Yeah. And then the hate came like a lot of it because yeah. we got more and more popular and, you know, like girls start talking yeah. and then the guys hate because the girls like, yeah. you know, why they don't like it. It just went like that and just pure hate and to the point like that I wanted to quit oh. you know it was like so you, you think uh, you had like a really uh, negative environment to start with as far as like uh, when you were uh, I think even showing your workouts and stuff yeah I think even the people who were around me back then weren't the right people for me mm -hmm. you know just maybe using me like some yeah. of the people so quickly when I saw that, I cut them off. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, it just the whole city was like, you can't cut off the whole city. I yeah. tried, you know, to ignore, but... How, how were you able to um, just, like, ignore all that and keep getting better, keep, you know, in, uh, growing your, your, your following, um, keep, you know, planning and, 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 and uh, you know, making goals for yourself and keep growing? Like, um, how were you able to do that with when it, when it was in that type of environment? Like, what motivated you or how did you <laughs> went about it? At the beginning, I closed off, really, you know, just being by myself and like to go to my park, I have to go through my city and there's like a lot of people and I have anxiety and everything. So I think I always thought like people are talking bad about me and there are actually a few times like, like I had like uh, the, how do you call it? Headphones. Headphones, yeah the headphones in and I one of them didn't work so I, I heard like people yeah. talking shit yeah. I was like oh, shit, just me. <laughs> so a few times I tried like going different routes yeah. to the park you know just to avoid everyone and anyone you yeah. know but after like I don't know just thinking like I had to be like fuck them I'm gonna still I believe what I'm doing yeah. and already back then I knew that I'm gonna do yeah. something in a sport yeah and then we started like competing started like well, we only went i think for we did one charity event which was really cool and then i went for a, one competition in a different country where i got like five medals i think and that helped me yeah. um, to make my name a little bit bigger in the balkan area you know already back then and then there were like talks about the qualification for the World Cup yeah like oh in, in Zagreb and you know in yeah. Croatia I'm like oh no it'd be cool if I can go so I contact the people there and they're like yeah we can put you on the list you can come but there you have people who have been training for yeah. four or five years like people from other countries come I'm like oh yeah. but when I read like the federation rules and everything because if I'm gonna do something and then it's gonna be proper and how it should be done. So I was like re reading the rules and I knew what I need to do to win. Yeah. So I went to the competition and I ended up second and I qualified for the final mm -hmm. in Moscow, in Russia. And that was like, holy, you know, that got my name even bigger in the Balkan area. Yeah. But anywhere else, no one knew me, mm -hmm. basically. And then I never even step on a, on a plane or left that far yeah. away from home or anything. So it was like a weird experience. So I went to uh, Russia, like, holy, you know, th these are the same people that I watched on TV a year ago. Yeah. You know, same people. And this show will be also on Eurosport. I'm like, I did it. Yeah. Well, I, what I said like a year ago, yeah. I did it. And I'm hanging out with like Ed Checo from Bar Stars or Vadim Olenik or yeah. everyone like the big names are yeah. there. And then I ended up third and that really just overnight exploded. And now not only the people from the Balkan area knew me, knew me even more because I was like on newspapers and everything, but like worldwide. Then I started like traveling and then in my next travel after that one was FIBO 2014 and then that's where we met. Yeah. Nice. So like Yeah, that's really great to see. Like uh I remember I remember when, when you went to that championship and I remember um you know how well you did and I saw the posts and stuff and I was like that's when I, that's when I found out about you too. Oh, yeah? So you're right when you said that that kinda uh cal uh catapulted you. Yeah. So you know when we met at FIBO, I knew about you oh, yeah? because because of that. You know, I think that really gave you like credibility because you know you're obviously a really good athlete. You know, with a lot of dedication and it shows. Mm. So you know, people like that and it gravitates. And you know, as long as you're positive, like it's um, you know um, people like that and they want to follow that. Mm. So yeah, w when when you went there, that's when I, that's when I noticed you, and oh, that's I when I was that. seeing you everywhere. So going into FIBO, obviously, like, 
by that time already like I knew who you were like I was excited to meet you and all the other guys and you know and and work out and stuff and uh, um, it, it was really cool it was really cool yeah I remember that time and everything where I like been and how everything went really fast like yeah. in a year a year and a half like everything changed and people are like inviting me to feeble and to compete here to compete there do yeah. events here just overnight basically it was like life-changing yeah. and then I really realized like okay like I can probably make a living so around from that, it. That, that little era, small little era right there that's when you kind of like it kind of clicked it, like, it clicked and or like this is serious right yeah and like meeting like you and Ed or any other like big name who already like made it you guys were like an example that I can follow and be like if they did it and doing it well then why can't I make it you know so I like watching you watching Ed like what you guys been doing and posting but it, I wasn't at that level yet and I don't think I was even ready mentally mm -hmm. for it if it came everything like like for you like everything came like at once if that happened to me in 2014 i probably wouldn't handle it how it sh i should so i think now like in the past few years how i matured and yeah. how i know my place in the in the industry and everything now i'm like okay I'm yeah, i think i think that uh yeah what's really cool about you is that um, you you kind of stood the test of time and you've grown and you've evolved and you learn yeah. through all your experiences so every every step of your journey that you took you it was like a learning experience yeah. to to make you realize that okay I'm ready for the next level I'm ready for the next one the next one so you're always pushing the envelope and you're always wanting to improve you're always wanting to be a better person um, you always want to do the right thing um, so yeah man that's really commendable Thanks. Well, I was never rushing into it, you know, like yeah. I was like, let it be, you know, and just keep working, keep working out, you know, promote my name and yeah. do like social media and everything. And it, it will come. I think, you know? yeah, like, like, yeah, you paid your dues. I think like out of a lot of people that are out there, you're like the perfect example that, you know, you work really hard, you paid your dues, you had your setbacks, you kept pushing. Um, you built a very credible um, brand for yourself and I mean I think that's awesome thanks man yeah. I appreciate it because I think now watching a lot of people just want to get famous because they watch you me or anyone else like yeah. who, who's like already big and they just want that without really working for it or doing anything about it they just want right away right now I don't want to wait a year like for you, you start working out, like you said, like 2006, 2008, yeah. you know, getting like more into it and everything. And me like starting as a gymnast in yeah. 1999 and it's yeah. 2019 now. And only now I'm like, yeah, starting e really exactly. Right. exactly. But people don't really want to wait for it. And I get messages like daily, like, how do I get more famous? And how to like, I, I didn't try. I didn't really, that wasn't the main goal. Yeah. You know, that wasn't like, okay, yeah, like it will be nice or I can do it. But, but I was never like, I, I want to have one million and I want people to look at me. And it was never that goal. Yeah. It was just me liking to work out. Even if I don't have 200, 300 people, 1,000 people watching me, I will still yeah. work out, yeah. you know, because I like it. Yeah, that's what you do, what you love. That's what I love to do. That's, yeah. I, I can't do anything else. You know, I, I like to work out. Mm. I like to eat healthy. Yeah. It's not just, it's a lifestyle. It's not, you know, a cliche or whatever. Yeah. I actually live this life, you know. Yo, what's up gang? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna have a good talk and an interview with my one of my good friends and motivations from the calisthenics world. You probably know him as the superhuman or better yet, Frank. Medrano, thank you so much yeah. for doing this. Awesome, man. How's everything? Good, good, good. Great yeah. to be here and uh, meet up with you again and have a good talk. So, like, speaking of eating healthy nutrition, like uh, the plant-based diet that you adopted and you started eating plant-based, uh, how did that 
um, come about as far as like what made you try it out to begin with? What what curiosity um, or what did you see or learn or what was it that made you kind of like jump into it? Well, I think the number one thing is knowledge because if you don't try new stuff then you're not gonna learn anything Mm -hmm. so like in my past like when I started working out I really didn't know too much about nutrition especially as a gymnast our trainer or parents or it wasn't like oh you have to eat chicken and Mm -hmm. broccoli or fruit okay fruit here and there but no proper nutrition because no one even knew or you don't even have the money to like really support a healthy like diet so I wasn't I know vividly that after the workout I was eating chips and drinking coke Mm. after every workout you know and only when I started with calisthenics in 2012 then I was like eating oats and try to get eggs more fruit vegetables but it was more like just me trying to figure it out yeah And then like every year you learn, of course, more and you meet, you know, different athletes when I started traveling and hey, what do you do? Mm -hmm. How do you eat? You eat in the morning? What do you eat in the morning? How much do you eat? It was like that and just picking stuff, not just from the diet, but also like from a workout Mm -hmm. standpoint. But yeah, just I don't know if I asked you about because you're vegan back then and that was like, wow, you don't eat meat Mm -hmm. you know like that was like interesting for me but i was never i never had a desire to try it Mm -hmm. then how years went by i was trying more and more diets so flexible dieting then i tried uh keto Mm -hmm. the ketogenic diet then that went really well but i was eating too much meat and it was like i didn't i felt good and i was ripped and everything and I thought that I was like in the best shape of my life. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, I need to change something and I want to learn more now. So I started like researching about the vegetarian and vegan diet and just went not slowly climbing into it, you know, eating, light, no, but I jumped in yeah. and just like stopped eating meat. Start, stopped eating eggs and just went fully vegetarian and after a month I think I went vegan mm-hmm. and my diet changed so much because for two years I was only eating meat so beef chicken fish and broccoli and avocado and nuts yeah every day like half a kilogram of meat every day it was like when I look back at it, it wasn't that healthy, you know, and it was like boring every day you're eating the same yeah. stuff. So when I went vegan, I'm eating so much more like yeah. these type. And you can in a ketogenic diet, you can't even eat fruit. So for two years, I didn't have a banana, apples, mango, like nothing. That must be very sad. <laughs> yeah, like when I'm, I don't know how I did it because I love apples. I like yeah. fruit and everything. But oh, I, if I'm doing ketogenic diet, then I'm going to do it. I, I should you know so I was like testing like the keto strips you know yeah. that I'm always in a ketogenic state and yeah so when I went vegan I started eating like fruit and this kind of fruit and that kind of fruit and vegetables and trying different like recipes like it was actually fun yeah. you know like cooking again like yeah. properly trying different things and everyone was like telling me oh you're gonna lose a lot of muscle your strength will go, go like away like you're gonna ruin like everything that i build yeah. and the totally opposite happened like i gained strength or for a time it was like the same and then i got more ripped during that period like i got in a most ripped shape of my life until now <laughs> like now i think i'm even in better shape um my endurance was good, strength was good. Then when I was bulking during uh, the, this winter, I gained seven kilograms all on a vegan diet. Like, pff, what? You know, how is that even? Because I learned how to do it and yeah. 
like watching other people and everything what they eat youtube and everything yeah. just went better and better now while well, i was cutting weight i'm now 80 kilograms 180 pounds ripped like six seven percent body fat mm -hmm. and everything my strength and was never this high my endurance is really good now my shape like everything is like on a yeah. top level and i'm not eating meat for a year and a few months so it's That's great. and i'm not looking like to start eating meat again that's great. I'm almost thinking about doing raw vegan. I don't know if you tried. Uh, raw vegan, so you don't cook. Yeah, right? yeah, no, uh, no, I haven't tried it. No. Yeah, so I mean, it's really cool that you figured out a way. Uh, you figured out a good um, plant-based um, nutrition to follow. Because I know some people struggle with that. Yeah. But it's really cool that you, you know, you figured out the way, and uh, you know, you're doing it right. Yo, what's up, gang? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna have a good talk and an interview with my one of my good friends and motivations from the calisthenics world. You probably know him as the superhuman or better yet, Frank Medrano. Thanks so much yeah. for doing this. Awesome, man. How's everything? Good, good, good. Great yeah. to be here and uh, meet up with you again and have a good talk. Um, another thing that I've been kind of curious about was to ask you is like, why, why did you stop competing in street workout? Um, the not... I have a few reasons why I stopped. Um, the number one thing, it started to remind me of my gymnastics like career. Mm -hmm. It's like learning the elements and everything. And then I never liked doing elements. The second reason why the, I stopped competing is I just think the sport changed a lot so when i started and everything i was like watching uh the old school guys like the guys from new york and everything and every, everything was like sets and reps and the the elements that they were doing were more strength based yeah. you know and now like from 2014 15 and onwards it was more dynamics and people just jumping around backflips and just trying 360 540 720 trying to do like more and more more momentum based. more more momentum based stuff and me having the injuries that i had and uh being 80 kg and 180 pounds and everything being like i'm not a bigger guy but the guys who were doing the 540s and everything, they were like 30 kgs less than me. Yeah. You know? So how can I compete with my 180 pounds against someone who has 100 or yeah. I don't know how much? Yeah. You know, it, it's not fair and they didn't have like the weight categories or anything. And I think the rules and everything were leaning more to the dynamic yeah. style of competing than on a static and strength. So after a while, I was like, I, I'm not gonna learn to do dynamics. I don't want to. I could probably because of my background and everything, but I, it's not me and I don't want to. Yeah. And I didn't want to get injured because when, when I watched and I judged and everything, I was like cringing basically and like closing my eyes and everything being like, oh, yeah. someone will get snapped yeah. and a lot of people did you know yeah. so because i knew they are not warming up they're not doing their basic sets and reps they're not doing nutrition like you can see their bodies like when they're going down like just, like yeah. i i can just see the injuries coming yeah. you know so i was like nope i'm leaving yeah. you know because i still did like a few uh reps competitions here and there which i won most of them yeah. or second place but freestyle and everything i think everything changed since 2014 and it's not for me mm -hmm. so what do you think about it yeah. what, did you follow like the rise and everything of street workout yeah i mean i saw i saw the rise when it first started i i, I remember it being uh more workout based yeah. where you saw more actual Strength. strength exercises where it's reps counted form 
um, difficulty and strength. Like I, I saw the, the transition when it, when it became from that into more yeah. dynamic movements where like 360s, 380s, 1000s, I don't know what yeah, it is now, 5, but it, it keeps going more and more. And then, uh, and I saw a lot of injuries too. I, I've seen a lot of people and I've seen the posts and I've seen the videos where people just fall on their heads, fall on their heads. people almost die. People yeah, yeah. get uh, injured because they're trying so hard to come up with these really Please. amazing moves that really is, is just, uh, I, I, honestly for me, like I really don't see the point. I, I, it, it, it passes uh, a stage where like, okay, at some point this isn't uh, s safe or fun anymore. Yeah. It's not really fitness anymore actually yeah. as well. So it, when it, when it uh, changed from fitness more into, uh, I want to say the word circus, but, but something where it's like more trying to do something that's like um, dangerous and looks cool but it's a total disregard for your own body yeah. when it gets to that point it's well uh i i felt that it got so much into that and some of the strength athletes weren't getting as much points you know i saw the competitions i saw you know i know who's who and when i saw certain people lose yeah. to people that just did moves i it just it didn't really sit well with me it's like it's like no that's not right you know that's uh it's not i i feel like the the point system was never really figured out where i understand you know the moves are really hard and it's a risk that they take mm -hmm. but it's it's not really a risk that's necessary you yeah. know um that's when it turns um into something totally different and it's not fitness you could argue that fitness is any movement and fitness could do be whatever they want but i mean the way i see it from the beginning it was pretty much all about the workout and your your strength stamina and you're able to have you know you know strength holding these moves and and and, and you know added weights added everything um for you know now you could just uh um have athletes that really don't really care about fitness but learn a few fancy tricks and all of a sudden they're an, they're an athlete yeah. uh when it when it transitioned into that that's when it, i i feel like it started kind of going down and don't really see much anymore i mean don't get me wrong there's a lot of strong athletes oh, out yeah. there there's really strong athletes out there that that and do a lot and mean, both sides guys and the dynamic that guys don't get me wrong they they're, they're, they're doing. yeah amazing athletes not taking anything amazing athletes us, but, but i just felt like yeah this it wasn't figured out correctly to measure yeah. the dynamics and the strength aspects to really focus on that you know yeah. to really i felt like the point system and figuring that out to determine the winners was not really um, figured out and in my opinion and from what I see I really don't see it that much anymore um, I'm sure it's out there I'm sure there's still competitions you know yeah. um, but um, it's I don't really see it, the excitement as yeah. what it used to be back yeah. in like 2012 2013 oh, yeah. um, uh, and I think like the base of fitness in general it's health so the, the stuff that these guys are doing, I don't think it's healthy at all for their bodies and everything because they're not really paying attention to warming up before, doing their mobility, doing their stretching, doing everything. Yeah. So you're already losing the base of everything. And yeah. the only thing you have left is showing off and, but then, getting what, injured. and then getting injured yeah. and probably like losing your career before it even started exactly. for what to impress three judges who will yeah. judge your 740 if you can catch it or not yeah. and a lot of guys don't even have that move practiced enough yeah. and when they practice it they're practicing on like concrete in a park yeah so if you if you fail if you don't grab it you're maybe you're gonna fall on your head yeah and like now like okay in 2011 12, more 12 13 14 when you compete and when you win you actually get something out of it you know you become a name you get noticed more sponsorships and everything so you can actually make a living from it yeah. but i think today because you have so many athletes and i think you get less coverage of it of the competitions and everything because yeah. today i have no idea who's the world champion mm -hmm. no offense but i think 
whatever who's organizing it, he's not organizing yeah. it properly and giving actually the athletes who are actually competing like proper uh, showcase, you know? Yeah. So like for me and the people who won, I didn't even win. I was top three and I'm the only one from that competition who's still relevant. Yeah. Who was in the top three? The only guy, yeah. you know? Even the, the guys before, at least they're like relevant because they made a name because the, yeah. the platform was like built to make you like bigger, you know? But today I, ha I have no idea who's winning the competition, how they're winning it. Yeah. Everyone's doing the same thing. Like how, how are you gonna make your living and everything from it? No idea. Yeah, I just, I think that's just a lot of people that were doing it back then and, and it, when it transitioned into a lot of the dynamics and stuff and there was so many people learning also because it opened it up to Definitely. a lot of people to do it because it's really not that hard to do. You're just risking yourself yeah. to injury um, using all this momentum and learning it. Yeah, it's a skill that you practice and you learn. But you're still putting a lot of work in it. Well, you're putting, you're putting work, probably even hours in learning these catches and doing it. Yeah. But um, it's just, it, it, it goes away from the health and fitness. You know, a lot of these people um, don't take their health serious either. You know, they're either probably doing drugs, um, they're not taking care of their bodies, they're not, you know, eating right. And I feel just a lot of them just fell off and you don't really hear much about them. A lot of them fell off since even 2011, a lot of them fell off, but especially I think now, because they give up too easily and everything. Because they think like, oh, I'm going to go for a few competitions. I'm yeah. going to risk probably my life or yeah. injury. So if I don't get top three or they get it yeah. and nothing happens, then they give up. Yeah, exactly. But and I think, yeah, I think there's just a lot, a lot of people that went for that. They want to get that attention. They want to be able to get that spot up there where they're, they're, they're noticed and they're seen. And they don't have a plan like, okay if i get there like what do i do now they just like okay um what's the next trick i could do what's the next trick and eventually like you run out of tricks when yeah. you run out of tricks your whole uh uh career or your whole uh everything your path is broken because you don't have a plan and a lot of people a lot of people in street workout didn't make a plan they didn't think okay i'm doing all this i'm playing over here i'm working out i'm learning all this but what is it all for you know what is it all for is if you don't have a plan yeah. on making something out of this then because you're, you're not gonna compete forever mm -hmm. especially at that level that you're doing because like freestyle and everything you yeah. probably can't do it forever yeah. or you're gonna get injured or just what if you get bored or, or yeah. quit then what exactly. you know you have to start again from scratch probably start something else or everything yeah. i know a lot of people who started doing like freestyle and yeah. they didn't make it and then they had to go back to a regular job which it's no shame in it yeah. you know i have respect to everyone who's wor working yeah. a nine to five but if you want to build yourself as an athlete and everything then you have to do the work you know not just try to compete and try to do freestyle and then if you don't make it, then... <laughs>